Hello. Hello. Okay. You. I didn't hear anything out of you. Let's hear hello. Okay. And that had that much enthusiasm. Yes, yes, yeah, it's gonna work. All right. So real quick around the room. Give me your name and why you're in real estate. Right here, Tracy. Tracy, just because honestly, there's really nothing better. It's just a great business to be in. Because there's nothing better, Sean. Uh, uh, Shane. Shane, Shane, Sean. I love, I love the freedom of real estate, and uh, it excites me to do more learning and being able to help people. It really does, coming from a, a position of being able to help them instead of I need your business. Being able to help, them. I got you. I can fix that. I can take care of that. Love it. I love it. Nicole. Nicole. And I'm in real estate because I enjoy um, shopping <laughs> and I like the flexibility of your business. Um, I'm kind of helping people find their thing. You know, whether it's moving from this friend to that friend and they have to get a job or person to that house. And <clears throat> yeah, there are connections out yep. there. Sandra. Sandra. Yeah. So I'm pretty new to real estate, so I don't know, but I, I like the interaction with people and see all the different properties of the market. Hi, I'm Lee, and I'm a real estate junkie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is Martha. Um, for the people, it's always fascinating. Um, three years ago, I bought my own place. My brother, right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can help other people and yeah, you can make a pretty good living. Yeah. yeah. Um, I am Deisha and I got into real estate because I don't like boring and just finished getting this bar from <laughs> yeah, Okay. Yeah. What new things did we learn today? Jason. I'm Jason. Uh, and like Deisha. Something new, something new every day so we same thing every day but different yes yeah. yes exactly yeah. i'm bill um i want to help people get into a house and have a better experience than i did when i bought my house yeah. it's that's great i remember it was probably my fifth realtor in my right. lifetime and all the other realtors were generic they could have had you know been yellow with a black line around them and this one realtor, Judy Adams, changed my whole perception of what was possible. So good on you. That's sorry. Aloha, watch for oh, the cord. I can do this. Do it. <laughs> for those of you playing at home, we have the limbo rock going over here. Here's that. I'm Tracy Short. I got into real estate because I'm a real estate junkie. I love helping people. And I like. Um, things that are new and the flexibility that it provides. The alleged flexibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my name is Allie, and I am in real estate as well. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I, I'm eager to learn, and um, I like you know puzzle piecing things. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of that. I haven't. Any deals yet, but it seems like there's a lot of sure. you just sit around and move it around, and I like that um, mental aspect. And um, I have two kids that are 14 and 12, and I'm motivated to help them get to college. <laughs> <laughs> you really need to have a why, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get out of bed in the morning. You know, we recommend that you write your affirmations, five things that you're grateful for, and the why ought to be on there. And those kids, they need to watch you and see what this business can do, right? Right. Yep. Because you can do some amazing things. Uh, if you're at Keller Williams, you'll talk to teams that have 2,000 agents on the team, multiple states. You have individual agents like Dean Otto, who are just... Mm -hmm amazing by themselves and you have smaller teams like ours it's just the possibilities are endless they're great well my name is Dan Mbode nice to meet you all and uh just trying to get out of my comfort zone you know I feel like I've kind of been doing the same thing for a long time so this is helping challenge me and doing something new okay so my, my kids as well so 
want to try to support my kids the best I can. Okay, we want to get you into a different comfort zone. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. no? yeah. I mean, I'm comfortable doing yeah. open houses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's First why, day, I'm, I'm like, here. that's why I'm here. I had cotton mouths. So I didn't know where to put my signs. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so my name is Abby Long, and why I joined real estate? I love to help people, like especially in the Latino community. A lot of my people I don't really understand, so I like you know I help them, I explain everything to them. Um, that's huge. That's yeah, that's a whole market segment for itself. Yeah, that's huge. But, I mean, you're in a better position for them to trust you than you know than I am. Yeah, that's why yeah. I want to like. He, like you're good in open house. I don't like open house. Well, then <laughs> that's why we're here, though. <laughs> I don't like and so, tell me why you're here if you don't like open house. To try something out of my comfort zone, I guess. Okay, I mean, okay. Well, let's get that in your comfort zone. Okay. So, how many of you went to my first open house class, or how many of you didn't? Let's put it that way. Okay. All right. Come on. In that session, we covered why you hold open house, when you hold open house, how to attract guests to the open house, uh, how to set up inside the open house, right? And just before you go back here on this table are some of the things that we have available at our open house for guests that are coming in. So there's a real estate uh, showing book. So we have things like the plat map, the tax record, uh, rental potential. So if we have rental income, we have that in there. We have the tax record, photos of the property, floor plans, if we have them. Because when people come in and they start asking questions, it's nice if you have a book and you can just say, hey, when they start looking at it, can you engage? So those things are back there. Pots, picks are back there. So that's top properties at different price points. So you want to have that when you're at an open house. We can talk about any of these things. Today, we want to talk about exactly what to ask and exactly what to say. And so how to close and how to follow up. And so that's why I was asking about smart plans. Uh, we use a program called Real Geeks and we use Workflows. Same, same difference, same thing. So what I want to get into is how many of you are holding open houses right now? Okay, we got a handful. Okay, let's talk about why you're not holding open house. And for those of you who are holding open houses, let's talk about what you're encountering. Because what I'm getting from, we've got a bunch of open houses available right now. Some of you have signed up for those. And when people go in, maybe they have different expectations from what's realistic, but also want to kind of understand what are you running into? So what's not working? What do you expect and what's not working? Um, let's see if I'm technically. No, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I, I found a button with the arrow on it. So that's moving right ahead. So when we go to an open house, when I used to go to an open house, I would set a goal for the open house. So how many of you set goals for your open house? Teresa, what, what kind of a goal do you set? Um, we set an open goal. I set um, a pipeline goal. I set a goal, whatever. So we, we, we visualize it and we put it together. It's like a written layout. And, um, yeah, and, and if I really think I'm gonna sell it, then that's the goal we spread an offer. I always pre do a, a purchase contract before. Okay. So it's all set up in the forms. And so if somebody comes in and they want to write an offer, I can go to Facebook and say, is it cash or is it? Zip top. You print out the purchase contract for people to look at so they can see Everything what the purchase contract is and it's in your book. Okay. Everything associated with that property is in the book. Okay. Anybody get anything out of what she said? Yeah. So does that seem like a good idea? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I have a relatively new agent on our team and her perception was 
Anybody who walks into an open house obviously wants to buy a house and they're probably going to do it with me, right? <laughs> everybody who walks is everybody who walks into the open house a real buyer? No, okay? So we have suspects and we want to separate them from the prospects. Suspects and prospects. So how do we kind of separate those people out? What do you ask, Jason? The suspect the Okay. This is a mastermind. I'm not sure that's a mastermind question, but. I have a couple, I have a couple questions as they come in after I invite them in. Uh, okay. One of them is, are you guys out looking at open houses today? Great. Are you guys planning on purchasing? Are you guys renting? It's just kind of soft peel them out as I just casually walk with them. And I get that information right away. All right, guys, do you guys live here in the complex? Yeah, yeah, we ran over there, but we want to see what the kitchen looks like. Suspect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we are out. But this is our third open house today. Well, you must be pretty serious. Are you represented by a, an agent? Well, let me show you anyway. So. Okay. All right. So there's some good dialogues right there. The people, by the way, that are looking that want to see what the kitchen looks like, they might be sellers. Sure. Okay. So the people that come in may be suspects. They may not know that they're prospects yet. Okay. And what we've found through research, and what I mean by we, this is actually the group, which is the Ninja group in Colorado. They've done research. And if you've been, if you're an agent, you've been working with somebody or you know somebody for a while, or you're just friends with somebody, frequently you know before they do that they're going to buy or they're going to sell. Okay. And the way you know that is by some change. Something changed in their life, right? Could be subtle, could be bigger. So we always want to be listening for change. And we'll go through some of the dialogues. But what we always talk about in Ninja is your aim is to add value and build trust, right? Because people are not going to work with you if they don't trust you. And people are not going to give you their contact information if you haven't added enough value. Mm -hmm. So somebody... If you ask at the end, can you please sign in? Or if you do that at the beginning and they don't do it, you get to the end, please sign in. And they, they decline to do that. They're either working with somebody, which you should have found out, or you haven't added enough value. They don't trust you enough. Okay? But the reason I ask about goals is the power of small wins, right? Because sometimes you go to an open house and nobody comes in. Uh, sometimes you go to the open house and you think, oh, this, this person's, this, I'm going to get the buyer today. You know, if you think, if you expect that every day, you're, you're going to be frustrated at the end of the day. So, but if you're building your pipeline, you've got a purchase contract ready and you get, you meet some of those goals, it gives you encouragement. It's like for golfers, you play crappy all day and on the 18th hole, you get this fabulous drive. It's like, yeah, now I want to go back and do this again. <laughs> right? The small ones, like the signs. So people are coming in, you've got traffic, and they're asking them, how did you find out about the open house? And they're like, oh, I followed the signs. It's like a score. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which one caught you first? You know, so now you're you're creating that database of sign placement and, yep. and how mm -hmm. I'm getting to lead. What are the breadcrumbs that are bringing them from point A to the main? Exactly. Okay. That's a win, even if nobody bought it. Sometimes you have a win and you didn't even know you had a win at the moment, right. and then it comes back to you later, right? Yeah. When people come into your open house, we're going to talk about the greeting. Just remember, every transaction starts with a conversation. Right. So there are people that just want to know right away, or, you know, are you a suspect or a prospect? <laughs> and right now they're like, you know, okay, I got, I got a salesman here. I don't want to deal with the salesman. Even salesmen don't want to deal with sales. Yeah. Right. Just want to have a conversation. And so we're going to talk about the conversations today. Um, we talked about when to do an open house. You know, my answer is anytime you can get out there and do an open house. I will say if you work in a residential area and you're working your open house from one to four, 
take it out to after five o'clock, okay? People are coming home from work, mm -hmm. beach communities, people are coming back from the beach, guests are coming back in for dinner. Extend it be either before nine o'clock or nine o'clock or earlier or till after five o'clock, right? Because the, it's like feeding time, right? They're coming through before breakfast, they're coming through before dinner. So extend it out to that. Unlike the mainland, for our big tourist community here, every day is a weekend, right? So seven days a week, we do open house seven days a week. And if you look at our board for what open houses we have when, we've got people stacked up seven days a week. So we talked about how to attract people to your open house. This is the list, you've got this, it's on your hand out there. But, take, so the shorts do a great job with getting their signs out. And how often do you ask people what brought you to the open house today? How often do they say, I saw your sign? I'd say 80%. So they were not necessarily planning to be out looking at open houses yeah, or, we, for Shane's comment. Best season for walking. So we'll oh. put out our scenes early, early. Yep. So we have a sign that's happening in it. So even if the open house is going to five, there's a sign at the unit that says um, open house from one to five. If we're not here, we are for that sign. Here, please call me at seven and seven for home putting up signs. And then all the signs we have with the, the time is that they're up by the seven a.m. one to a five. But you get it out, and they see there's a lot of visibility. And they get it subconsciously. So this is just them seeing your sign over and over as they're driving by, even if they don't. And we've gotten them listening to them. I was going to say, who else sees your signs? It's not just the people that are coming. right? It's people that say, oh, I want to sell my house, and I want, I know realtors don't do anything, but it looks like she's working. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So they want to see somebody that's working. <clears throat> Um, if it's your open house, if it's your listing, put it in Paragon. If it's not your listing, have a listing agent put it in Paragon. So you'll see ours all have the little glasses, the Paragon glasses to show. Email blast to RAM. You all know you can download the entire RAM list, list of all the realtors on Maui to an Excel sheet. Okay. Um, if you don't know that, call somebody at RAM, tell them how to to teach you how to do that or get your coach if you've got a coach. You don't have a coach, get somebody to teach you how to do that, okay? And if you are using a program like MailChimp or something else, you can send them all out one big blast. If you're just sending them out through Outlook or something else, you're gonna have to break it up into smaller chunks. But you want agents to know that you're out doing the open house. You also want your entire database to know that you're out doing an open house. And I don't care if you're in Minnesota or New Jersey, you want them to know that you're working. You wanna stay connected to all of the people whose names are in your database. How many realtors does each person know on average? Keep going. One, 12. Back down, 12, I like 12, okay? 12 realtors. So somebody needs a realtor, who are they gonna call? First, first person on top of their mind. That's right, top of mind. So if they're seeing your stuff all the time, and especially if they're on the mainland, and especially if it's cold, right? And they're seeing a picture of the ocean. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's where I want to be. I get thank yous from people in Chicago who just saw a picture of the ocean, yeah. right? So we invite them to come on out. Let the neighbors know, door knocks. You guys talk about that in Ignite. Uh, flyers, invitation, condos. I cannot overstress letting the front desk know where you are and having flyers. And it's really a good idea if you bring them cookies or brownies, okay? It's really a good idea. People, tourists don't realize that the front desk has nothing to do with the real estate. So tourists will all the time go up to the front desk, say, what's for sale? How much is it? And people at the front desk say, I don't know. And people get pissed off. It's like, what do you mean you don't know? You work here, you know. They appreciate it. They can just give them a flyer and say, oh, go to, go to 916. Jason's having an open house, right? While they're eating your cookies. Mm. Okay. Bring the cookies every day. 
Give them flyers. Please do. It's really good if you go before your open house for the property, especially if it's a condo, introduce yourself to more the day of it and and let them because you build them a the more you see somebody. So find out where they want you to park. Ask what their their uh, rules are regarding your signs on the tree. The fact that your skin puts you above at least 50, 60 percent of the other rules are collecting their signs and catch you. So signs are expensive. So you, you want to ask, you want to be courteous and thoughtful. And then when they see you the next day, then you show up. I've got my cookies. There are things that are more apt to give them out. They're also more apt to call you if they hear that somebody is going to sell in the complex if you develop a relationship. Yeah, and a basic concept of ninja is be nice, <clears throat> right? So the people at the front desk just see realtors going by all the time. And, you know, they don't, they don't have any connection. And they're used to transient people. So they don't really make friends. Yeah. But if you go by every day, say hello, give them flyers, give them business cards, you get to know them. And then you're like part of the Ohana, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're you're part of you you belong there. You're part of what's supposed to be there. So make sure you do that. Okay. Um find out where you can put up signs. We're not going to go over that. I will say one thing, put a sign on the front door to tell them to come in. So especially in a condo complex, if they have screen doors, they can't see the numbers on the door. Besides that, from the time they turned off the street and said, okay, we're going to condo 916 until they parked their car, they forgot the number. Right. So they don't remember who you are anymore. Yeah. Right. So they'll start trying to find it. And if it's a house and you want them to come in, because in Lahaina, when I do open house at a, at a house, I want the door closed because I want the AC on, right? <laughs> um, the owners don't appreciate me trying to, you know, air condition all of Lahaina or kind of poly. <laughs> so you want to sign in the front door telling people to come in. Otherwise, they'll think you're not there and they'll go away. All the stuff for the setup. And I will say, that the open house really all starts with your setup. What you have and what you say, you wanna do a lot of discovery at the beginning. All of these things, if you wanna look up here, I've got a binder up here with a, a showing book. So it's got a lot of this stuff in the book. Um, I used to take driving maps. You can still get the driving maps at some of the concierge places. People get fascinated by maps, they'll stop. And what you want to do is you want them to have a conversation with you. So have stuff that stops them and makes them interested. Um, I have a binder called Pots Picks. So when people come in and you're at a two bedroom condo and they say, I'm really looking for a one bedroom or I'd like to own a property, but I don't want to spend this much money. Wouldn't it be a good idea to have other properties that you can talk to them about? So this is Potts Picks. It's that's my name for it. You should have a name for your binder. You should have properties in here because then people will flip through. They'll just stand at the counter or at the table and flip it through. And then you can have what? Conversation. Conversation. So this is a sample. You notice there are condos in there for $300,000, so you can tell how old the book is, right? <laughs> um, real estate magazines, I'm not big on. Treats, so you taking treats to your open house, Teresa? What do you take? Yeah, but nothing that will stain or, or um, like we don't do chocolate inside open houses because people get chocolate on their fingers and then they get it on walls and if they have kids, that would be where it's going. So we keep, we do packaged like the vanilla nuts okay. or, or something that's really good. Um, healthy, name brand things like the big bar. Um, if I pick up something from, from um, 
somewhere it's it's packaged. It's packaged, so they yeah. Can, they can take it and go. If they, we also have like um, the kids. We have the trail mix. We have the goldfish in, in small packs. But we we never offer those to the kids. We offer them to the parents. Yeah. And yeah. then if the parents say yes, they do it, and then they either have to sit on the wooden line or they have to sit at the table with the human club or Offer them to you. Through you guys, through lab, but one of the open houses that I followed another agent um, for the owners were fit to be five when I got there because the agent who had hosted the day before had Cheetos and chips and burritos and everything. And they had to take the whole white the bay and the master, and somebody had sat with their handprints. Mm -hmm. On that the bay, you could find the culprit, the fingerprints. Yeah. <laughs> so we used to use in the before times. We used M and M's because they would stand there at the bowl and pick out one at a time and eat it. Oh. So for most of the stuff, you take less is more. Because right. people will not take something large like a shrimp. Um, small waters, I find those to be very good, right? Because they're coming in because it's hot and they'll take a water from you. So something to have them linger and have a conversation. Um, so this is where the conversation begins. And I have this because my one of my first clients who picked me to represent them had picked out a condo that they wanted. Uh, there was an open house when we went out to look and the agent or the my client was actually a broker from New Jersey. They had moved here. And she said, watch this. And I said, watch what? And she said, when we go in, the agent that's there is not gonna talk to us, All right? So we walked in, um, second floor, open the door, go in. The agent is sitting there. She's on the sofa. And I kid you not, she literally had the phone book open in front of her. She never looked up, she never greeted us. And we walked through the whole condo. So what you want to do is add value, build trust. So one of the ways that you start to add value is you greet them. So welcome to the open office. Smile. Have a warm smile. Make them feel good that you're coming in. How are you today? Thank you for coming to the open house. How are you today? And then pause, take a breath, okay? Let them have an opportunity to talk. Okay. Find something to acknowledge them or pay them a compliment. That was a really cool colored blue on that shirt. Appreciate it. Those are beautiful earrings. I'm looking for somebody with earrings. Oh, that necklace, that's gorgeous. How does that make you feel? Right. People will pay for two things. Either something that makes them feel good or something that solves a problem, okay? They like you, they're connecting with you. We got the Broncos hat on. Hey, you're a Broncos fan. No, somebody gave me this hat free. You still started a conversation, right? And then you wanna introduce yourself. I like to pause to see if they're gonna introduce themselves. And why would I do that? It's because it's about them. It's not about me. It's about them. Okay. So you're off to a good start. Um, okay. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. All right. So I, want, I do want to know what, what brought them to the open house today. Right. So why would you ask that? Does everybody ask that? What brought you to the open house? Okay. To establish that motivation. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what kind of answers do you get? We just live in the neighborhood. We just live in the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, okay. See, see about the floor plan. But what does that tell you? We live in the neighborhood. And they may be looking to sell as well. We'll take up another one. Another friend of theirs. They got a friend. They got a family member. If they're coming to look just because they're the nosy neighbors, they still want some information. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They still want to know what that property is worth. 
And I, and I got to tell you, I had lunch with the, the president of Ainanalu yesterday, which is kind of complex. And, and I said, hey, we just closed one for $920,000. His eyes got this big, right? Oh, for that much, maybe I'll sell, right? Okay, so we're, we're the nosy neighbors. We're just looking. Some people do a nosy neighbor open house, right? So they go around like on the day before, invite all the neighbors to come in. So what else do people say? I'm just killing time before my flight home. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was one of these. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that one later. We'll come back to that one later. Um, what else do people say? We're pre approved and we have to buy a house this week. <laughs> okay, so how many of you got that one? I have had, I have a 1031 exchange and it has closed. Yeah, I, my release, my sole property has already sold. I have had that before. Um, so that's that's pretty good. All right. So what brought you? I saw your signs. I saw on Zillow. All right. So you want to know those so that you know that your advertising is doing something, or maybe it's not doing anything. The person at the front desk sent me up here. Okay. So you want to know to bring better cookies. Mm -hmm. next day. And a thank you card. And a thank you card. Yes. 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 You're looking for what? An investment. Okay, so then you start to know what kind of questions to start asking. Okay, so what would be the ideal investment property for you? What are you looking for? So, because now they're really looking. Pardon me? And so, can you follow up on that question? There's a question built into the question. So, how, how would you follow up, Teresa? I would ask, how often do you come here? Okay. Which unit are you staying in? What do you like about that unit? Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, usually if they're staying in it, they don't have to take it yet. The, the answer is yes, but not yet. Okay? <laughs> yes, but not yet. So that's the uh, second question up here. Is this your first trip to Maui or have you been here before? Before that, I, I usually ask, are you do you live on Maui or, or are you a visitor? Okay. Because for residents, if you go in and they ask, oh, where are you visiting from? It's kind of insulting, right? We took a helicopter tour for Barbara's birthday on Tuesday. And the guy was explaining to us about Maui and about Kahakaloa. And it's and you know, get headphones on, so I can't tell him uh, we live here, we know this. But um, yeah, ask, do you live on Maui or are you visiting? Right. If they're visiting. And you want to know, is this your first trip or have you been here before? Okay, I didn't ask how many times you've been here. I want them to start a conversation, right? So they're going to start telling you a story. And then, are you staying at the property? Um, I also want to ask them, have you looked at real estate on Maui before? Right. Okay. So what does that tell me? They are looking. Should tell you two things, right? They're probably interested. They've looked before. They haven't bought. And then I'll ask them, oh, who are you working with? Okay. So I don't ask them, do you have a realtor? Right. Who are you working with? Oh, I can't remember. Uh -huh. All right. So to me, that's open game. Yeah. Right. Because they don't really have any. Uh, sometimes they'll say, hey, I was working with, but that wasn't really working for me. And they give me a name. Sometimes they say, hey, I'm working with Chase. And then what do I say? Are you saying Thank you. Are you signed with him? No, okay, that's something to me. Okay. Chase is great. Let them have us. Do you have any more questions? Yeah. You're in great hands. Congratulations. That's. You need a backup. I'm willing to help you. You say that, I'm going to drop kick you out of so no you really this is a really small island it is your reputation moves really fast and you either 
really good and respected or you are one of those like on the post office wall. <laughs> You're one of those that they talk about at Care about when they're having coffee or after the day when they're at, having cocktails, right? You don't want to be that person. <laughs> um, so are you staying at the property? If it's residential, do you live in this neighborhood? Okay. And then if that's the case, either way, what's the follow-up question? What's the question in the question? Do you rent or own? No. No, that's that's a good thing to know. So that's, how, do you like living? Yeah, how do you like living here? Or if it's the condo complex, how do you like it here? Right? Because if they're staying at kind of Polish Shores. And we asked them, so how do you like it? And they said, I hate this place. <laughs> so, okay. So, well, no, these are potential buyers. Yeah. You know, yeah. What, tell me about that. What would you like? What would be better? And then you start trying to see what would be better for them. If they're in the neighborhood, if they're not in the neighborhood and they're looking, but they live here, then you want to kind of know, so why are you looking at this neighborhood? So you want to ask them questions, questions and questions. Um, have you looked at real estate before? And let's just go back. Because when somebody comes in, this is my phrase. So this is on your, this is on your paper. This is exactly what I say or what I used to say. This is a two bedroom, two bath, thousand square foot, fee simple condo. Walk around like you own the place. This is a vacation round, right? So there's no, people don't have stuff in there that's gonna get stolen. Walk around like you own the place. Be simple. When you say it, this is a two bedroom, two bath, thousand square foot, be simple condo. Yeah, what is fee simple? And if they ask you what is fee simple, what do you know? They haven't looked at real estate on Maui before. They're not serious yet. So you've got some work in you front of you. Would you them from there? Or would you answer their question of what is you? I would answer their question, but I would want them to start walking around first. Okay. okay. Want them to start walking around. If they don't even bat an eye and they keep walking, what does that tell you? They've looked at it, they, they know something about real estate on Maui, okay? And this is where the other question, have you looked at real estate on Maui before comes into play? Because the rule of thumb, which is just that, is people have to be here on three visits before they buy. I've had people buy the first time they're here, I've had people that come back every year and six years was my longest. One. Actually, six years wasn't my longest one. My longest one was. But they notice if they're coming back and forth for that many months, they notice that like six years ago, it wasn't as expensive to like their, when they're, wherever they're staying, the rent, you know, because I had a client that was like, we've been coming back and forth for six years and it was so expensive to rent this year. That we're thinking of buying and you know as an investment property so that we don't have to pay the um for a hotel room when they come back. Okay. All right. That sounds like a lot of motivation right there. Are we talking about hotel? Okay, that's good. Um, if it's a residential, so I tell them to walk around, I give them the same kind of introduction to the property. Tell them to go ahead and walk around. I'll be close enough to answer questions, but not close enough to be in your way. I want them to have their own conversation, right? If I'm too close and they don't like the bathroom, they're not going to tell me. If they hate the kitchen, they're not going to tell me. I need to know that, right? Because you're finding out what's, what's the most important room to them. How do they... Are they looking for something they can fix or they want something that's finished? Are they really buying or are they just the nosy neighbors, right? You're listening to clues to see if they're suspects or prospects. Okay. Listen for clues and ask questions that bring out clues. Okay, is that helpful? Yep. Yeah.
here is, I wanted to have a couple of questions that people come in and ask, right? So number one question that you get asked at any party or when people find out you're a realtor or frequently at an open house is what? How's the market? How's the market, right? And how do you answer that? You could read it right there. It is the most interesting market I've seen in years. What part of the market interests you? Or why do you ask? Okay, Because they don't really want to know that across the United States, prices are actually up 1% in the first quarter of 2023. They want to know something specific, right? And about that property or about their property. So you want to give them the opportunity to have a conversation. You're inviting them to have a conversation with you about what's important to them. Okay? If you can't get to what's important to them, even if they are a prospect, you're never going to convert. Okay. So that's the best answer I've seen. So we talked about walking with them, staying put. The hooks, so if they ask you about fee simple, I'm gonna to try to gauge where they are. And if they don't, I'm still gonna to try to gauge where they are. But before they leave, if they're leaving, if they're not staying with me, if I have not converted them in the, in the, in the open house and I believe they're prospects, I will say, you know, there are four things that you need to know before you invest in a property on Maui. So it could be a, invest in a condo on Maui, invest in a home on Maui. And then I stop right there. I don't tell them what they are yet. <clears throat> because if they're serious, the four things, or it could be three things, it doesn't matter. If there's a number in front of it, it's good headline, and people are going to stop. And I've had people stop and sit down on the sofa right there. And then we have a conversation. So the four things are association, rental options, fee simple, or leasehold, and financing. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a new agent joined us from California. Right away went out for a purchase contract for a condo hotel, 20% down. It's like, where did my training fail you? Okay, so people need to understand financing here. They need to understand associations. How many condos on Maui do not have an association? Zero, right? What about homeowners associations? Do people want to buy with homeowners associations or without homeowner associations? The answer is yes. <laughs> right? So. People need to know what the rules of the association are. And because you're educating them on things that could be, I mean, huge financial errors, are you adding value? Are you building cars? Are they setting up cocktails? <laughs> I can only have one margarita a day. I was afraid there was a limit, so I brought one. Okay. <laughs> Chase, um, your point about when you do find that um, potential client that is sit down and you're having a great conversation, and then two more parties go in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always torn between I'm about to enter trust. I feel that relationship. I have been contacted, and so let's continue this after my open house. Move on to the, the new people who have been with the property. Okay, so what do, you, what do you think you should do? Shane says, I stay with the first party. I want you to be looking at them and reading their body language, right? I've had people who, if we, if we talk about discs, okay, people that are S's will kind of give you the nod and say, you know, go, go ahead, go talk to them. I want to try to set an appointment with them, with my guys, or I want to ask them if they'll stay. But normally I'm going to do what, what Shane just said. I'm here. I'm building trust here. If I'm, okay, if I'm going to cheat on you and go over here, you know, that's going to damage the trust. 
So the people that walk in the door, hey, great. Thanks for coming to the open house. Walk around like you own the place. Okay. And let them start walking. Bird in the hand, two in the bush. Yep. You know, you've got people right in front of you that you're building a relationship with. So I would stay there. Different, different ideas, anybody? No, what I usually end up doing is one, of course, gauge where you are in, in the conversation and their body language, but I end up setting the appointment of my open house finishes at three at yep. this afternoon. Let's meet at my office or let's have a conversation. They can go ahead with the confirmation of time, who's contacting who. Um, I'm going to check, and then let's just not. I'm going to check in with the other people, and here, not or if they're not there, great, because I have a I have the appointment set for. for okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. gurus, so I want to. Um, I do want to get an appointment with them. So no matter what happens. I want them to come back to my offices. Um, if that's not going to happen, I want to get their contact information, right? So I, I had a person last year who bought, I met him at an open house in 2006. So he called, he actually came into our database, called Carrie Nicholson and said, hey, I know Lee. Well, I hadn't talked to him in over a decade, right? But he was getting my notifications, new wow. properties. Wow. He got all of our newsletters. He got all of that stuff. It was because we connected at an open house and listen for change. His last kid graduated from college. Mm -hmm. He immediately bought a condo. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm all this. No, I mean, I've, I've had people who have said, you know, I can't buy right now. I really want a condo. I'm ready. I'm able, but I'm not going to do it yet because I got a kid in Stanford. Right. So they bought an investment property or they bought a primary residence? Investment property. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It would, most 85% of what we do. Our condo tells or some kind of an investment in 31 exchange. That's what we focus on. Um, people that are buying primary residence, how often do those turn over? Well, you mentioned the fact that the kids, that the youngest just finished college. So I wasn't sure if that was a down kind of thing to the condo or if that was just, I don't have to pay for college now. So yeah. I have extra That's what I mean. It's I live in California, I'm paying for Stanford. Yeah. So when that's done, I'm going to have a lot of money here to spend. Yeah. So that's listen for a change. My kid graduated, right? Um, finally got that divorce and I got the alimony. I need to buy something here. So capture the lead. Um, if, if we've had this whole conversation and they feel like they might be possibly maybe somewhere down the road, a prospect, I want them in my database. So. I hear people talk about cleaning up your database, shouldn't have more than this many people. I got 17,000 people in our database, okay? They're all getting stuff from me. How much does it cost you to send an email? No. Okay, that seems like a pretty good investment. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's set it and forget it at that point. So what I say to them is, you know, if you're really interested in keeping track of real estate on knowledge, I can make sure you get these statistics every month, would you mind giving me your email address? Most people will sign into your sign-up sheet right there. And then I have them sign a piece of paper, I pick it up, I look at it to make sure I can read it. And if they didn't give me a phone number, I ask them for a phone number right there, just in case your email bounces back. Okay. And then that also creates a good opportunity to follow up after you sent them something because today's spam filters will scrape your stuff and put it into another folder. So if you're using Google, you've got the promotions folder, Outlook grabs all kinds of stuff. So you want them to get you on the white list, the good list. Um, when people are asking you a question, never assume. 
I don't know how many times I say this, but don't assume you know the answer. We take classes and we learn objection handlers. There's nothing that pisses me off more than I say something to a salesperson, they give me an objection handler that had absolutely nothing to do with my objection or my concern, okay? It's just a concern. Just listen to me and answer my damn question. So common questions, will it cash flow? Often does that come up? Okay, you should probably know the answer to that, right? What's the answer, Carissa? Well, because it's what the performa is showing, it can differ based on, on who owns it. You're the X factor. So depending on how much time you need to spend in it, or how much time you don't. Cash flow and cash, is that the Say that. Is it going to be a cash or a finance? Probably a good thing to know. Right? Well, that's really the ROI. Is it going to be cash? Okay. Um, that's what? Then you're looking to repeat. Some people just wanted to just break even because they're here for more pleasure than best. That's the first rule. Was... So I was asking, what does what does break even mean to you? Or what does will it pay for itself? What does that mean? I want them to start talking to me, right? And if and if they're financing, but we're running, we're gonna run short on time here. What I'll tell them is if you finance, first of all, you need to understand lending on Maui, right? Your Wells Fargo in California cannot and will not finance this condo town. Oh, yeah, they will. Yeah, no, no, they won't. They will for a reason on the contract. Yes. So what I tell people is if you finance the property, that's going to pay for your property taxes, your maintenance fees, your utilities. Um, and some of your other expenses and part of your part of your mortgage. Part of your mortgage. And so then we can go on and have a conversation because they're 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 disappointed, but they're a little more comfortable. And you're just blatantly honest with them. I trust you. Okay. You were honest. And then you can work pro forma as you can do, you know, whatever you need to do after that. Um when people come in and say, it's all about the numbers, I'm looking for a property and it's all about the numbers, okay? I wanna clarify, it's all about the numbers. This is just an investment for you, is that correct? Yes. Then as a professional, what I recommend is if it's all about the numbers is you buy roll-up storage in North Texas. Okay. So you ask any of the, our team members, you should get that answer if it's all about the numbers. Because the next thing you start figuring out is you're taking around showing a property. Here's one that will cash flow. Oh, yeah, but I don't like this. I can't see the ocean. Oh, yeah, I don't like the color of the bedroom. It's like, okay, so we're trying to get real here. So if it's all about the numbers, do you have an answer for that now? Yeah. What's your answer? Check the storage in North Texas. You should do storage in North Texas. <laughs> okay. I don't want to spend this much. That comes up, right? Okay. What's your answer? How much do you want to spend? Why don't you talk to me about what, how do you use the property? What brought you here today? Okay. Who is going to use the property with you? Let's, let's go at least three questions deep, okay? If you could wave a magic wand, what would be the perfect property for you? And then you've got your book with other properties in it, right? Okay. When I was getting started, 2005, 2006, I had a listing kind of Polly Shores, million one. I had, I think, six different people who came in and said, I've always wanted a property in Maui, but gosh, I love this, but my budget's more like 500,000. I sold six Ina Nalus, right? We did what? There's another complex called Ina yeah. It was a new property at the time. They were going for about 500. So, you know, why don't we get together and wouldn't it be a good time for you to see this other property? 
sometimes I just called the agent, the whaler's agent that was there and said, hey, I'm sending over a couple of people. Their names are, right? So they give me a new book. It's knowing your inventory. That's what Todd teaches, right? Teaches a class, know your inventory. So you want to know it. You want to have something to show it. I don't want to spend it. What would it mean to you? So get them into a conversation. What you want to do is get them from logical back to that emotional state. Okay. So what would that mean for you? What would that do for you? Right. Um, I put interest rates are too high up there because this doesn't actually come up for us very often, but I thought you might be hearing this. Mm -hmm. No, okay. Then I'm not gonna talk, yeah. Oh, wow. okay. yeah. Um, all right, and I'm not gonna talk about it because that elephant's like, apparently not in the room. That's how I feel because some of my friends, those casual conversations And you need to know what's available for your friends, right? right? So it's like the acupuncturist that whose office is next door to mine. We yeah. walked out today. She said, we'd really like to buy something. And then she told me all the reasons she can't. And I said, you know, we should just sit down and have a conversation. This was, we walked 20 yards. So we'll have an appointment. I'll bring in one of our agents and we'll talk to her about what she can do. So we're going to get past what you can't do and get to what you can do. Um, and sometimes that's like, no, don't cut back in your hours. You need to, you need to have a little more cash, but maybe not as much as you think. Okay. And then work with your lenders because there are some great programs out there. Right? So interest rates, we're closing in on it. Um, you've got this. So this is kind of turning You've got somebody in the neighborhood or you've got somebody at the condo. This, these are some questions. So this is your, you're converting somebody into a buyer and they've got a property to sell. Okay, so these are some of the choices. This is a listing opportunity. If they live in the islands, it's a listing opportunity. If they're selling something, uh, Lake Tahoe, it's a referral opportunity. Referrals are great. People send you money for passing along a name. Um, This is our buyer packet, okay? So it's got all the contracts, everything you need to know to buy property in Maui on this side. It's got all the propaganda about our company and all the nice things that we do over here. So if somebody is interested, so I've got the people that are sitting in front of me, uh, other people walk in, I say, I ask them, do you have a buyer packet? And they say, what's a buyer packet? So I say, I've got, this is a buyer packet. This is the only one I've got. So I have some time at 10 o'clock or I have some time today at four o'clock. Can you stop into my office? And people want this. They start looking through this. It's got list of lenders. It's got the statistics, our newsletter. It's got the charities that we run. It's got Things that you need to know before you buy a property on Maui is just full of information that people look at it, hey, and they want it. So this will close an appointment for you. So you need to have one of these with you. But only one. Only one. They go like right. five more. Right. You know how much printing costs? Yeah. Um. All right, so you want to get them, you want to put them on, everybody goes in your database, gets put on a property search, right? So new properties that are coming on, if you don't know what they want, put them, make it very broad. If you know they're looking for one bedrooms, ask them, would you mind if I also include studios and two bedrooms, okay? Everybody goes on a property search. If they don't want to be there, they'll opt out, okay? And that's fine, they're suspects, not prospects. If they're getting the properties and it's too much, they'll tell you, hey, I'd like you to cut back. I only want to see two bedrooms. But remember the phrase, buyers are liars. Okay. That's not true. They're just, they're not clarity yet. So last two years ago, I had a referral from a friend in San Jose. These people were buying the vintage. 
residential condo, three bedroom, two car garage, gated community. We couldn't find one. We couldn't find one. We couldn't find one. They came to Maui. They went out with Myra Plant. They bought a one bedroom, one bath, oceanfront front hotel. Okay. They weren't liars. They were just unclear. Not sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Allie, I, I, I broke it. No, you just dismembered it. Okay. Um, put them into Paragon, put them into Command, put them into a database of some kind and drip on it. I need to I need to flip the slider or else I'd take you up on that. Okay. Oh, that's it. What questions did I not answer? Will you change, obviously, maybe your, the properties you have in your picks depending on the property you're sitting on? Yes. Yeah. We did mostly, when I was doing this, I was doing mostly kind of tells. So you really didn't have to change it because I'm doing mostly kind of tells, but I would, I'd also have homes because people would, will come in and they're looking at your kind of tell because you're there and you have an open house. But they'll say, what about single family homes? What does a single family home cost? And then you can have homes in there, again, with a nice big range. So from whatever the lowest price in Lahaina is, for me, a million one. Starter um, home. For the next five, but it's one into contract, so. I bet it, it is. But have your range, go up to $10 million, put the most expensive property in Maui in there because they'll ooh and ah over it, right? And then they'll look and they'll start laughing and they'll have a conversation with you. Shane. Yeah, I do uh I do my open house is Monday and Tuesday on the mainland. I did it on the weekend, but Monday and Tuesday from eleven to five. Should I extend that out? I'm thinking extend it out and put another day in there. I, I expect all of the agents on my team to do three open houses a week, at least three. Okay. Uh, when I started, and I know Todd talks about when he started, we did seven days a week. Yeah, I went two months straight without taking a break. Sold five properties, got a listing. Right? Yeah. Well, if you, once you say you did seven every week, yeah. when do you do follow up and how do you do follow up? I do it at the open house when Once there's nobody months. there. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to where I would do. I do paperwork in the morning, work in the business in the morning, work on the business in the afternoon. So I'd start in the morning, do my follow up, make sure I had all my stuff lined up. So I'd go out, do the open house in the afternoon. And a lot of our agents will go until sunset, right? Yeah. So, California, that's when you did Yeah. Yeah. Because people are still showing up. Yeah. That's when most people are showing up. Yeah. What else? I'm looking, I'm looking. And so you're not locking them, obviously, or, you know, is there signs when you can tell? I mean, like, you know, I don't like it when people are too close to me for the thing. Yeah, like, you know, people, you step in and they step out. Like, are you following them? Because when, when I think, I think it's maybe it was Todd, he was saying, you stay behind them, especially if you're, you know. I'll be close enough to answer any questions you have, you but not close enough to be in your way. I actually say that to them, okay? I want to get them comfortable, because okay? I'm not gonna let them just wander through an occupied house. Right. And most of the stuff we sell, even the homes, there's nobody, they're here They're here two months of the year. I had a, I had a suspect on Tuesday tell me that uh, Paul through to give them some general information about the this is my normal scripts and my normal setting up for this. And I, I noticed he started walking a little bit faster. He starts to pull back just a little bit. And he goes, Shane, why are you stopping? You're on a roll. I said, do you really want to know about how many, when it was built, how many are uh, owner-occupied? And I just went on. He goes, that was awesome. 
Okay. Or just a suspect, but he actually stopped me and said, you're doing a great job. How about we continue? Yep. And you were you were trying to read him, right? Yes. You're yes. reading his body language. Yeah. You're re reading his movement. So communication is 70% nonverbal. Yeah. Okay. So that's a Stanford study. It's a real number. So watch people. Okay. And okay, here's one of my favorites because I love this. Watch to see if they talk like this or if they talk like this. Or match. Okay. If they talk like this, they're an I or a D or an ID. They talk like, and they want to talk, and they want short, concise information. Keep their hands in here. Their C's or S's, right? So you can be closer to the I's and D's. I'm going to give the other folks a little space. We'll play discs on it. You know, there's also another one that we took. Um, it's called What Animal Am I? Yeah. By Stefan Swanpole. Oh, Swanpole, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really, really good. It's it's not a very long one, but and then we read his book too, because we got we met him in yeah. California at our office. And uh it's a really neat one. It's called What Animal Am I? It's like a little disc house yeah. and teach it. And we were elephants, which is the eyes, the high eyes. The yeah, eyes. We were yeah, really? high eyes. Can you imagine two high eyes together like us? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going there. <laughs> that sounds like a trap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I think Dan, uh, Don is waiting for us, right? Is he at three? Okay. So thank you all for being here. You can call me, send me email anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.